Hello and welcome to video number two of the Generalized Additive Model Online Materials for NCRM. In this video, we're going to be fitting a generalized additive model using the R software package. And in particular, we'll be using the MGCV package, which is designed to deal specifically with generalized additive models. So the first thing I'm going to do is to load in the required packages so that I can use them in my current R session. This includes the tidyverse packages. These um, are really good to use to tidy the data set. They also contain ggplot2, which we're gonna be using to plot our data. Next, we're going to attach the MGCV package, which as I mentioned, is the main package in R that fits GAM models. And finally, we're going to use the marginal effects package, which allows us to fit the outcome and the results of GAMs without having to simulate data or extract them uh, ourselves. The next thing I'm going to do is to load the data that we'll be dealing with, which is this bike data set here. I'll give you a quick, quick preview of this data set. It contains information about the total number of bikes that were rented every day in Seoul between the end of 2017 and 2018. This data set contains information about the total number of bikes that were rented, as well as information about the weather conditions for each day. So what we're going to aim to do is to investigate whether the number of bikes that were rented was in some way linked to the temperature, which is measured in degrees Celsius, within Seoul that day. So the first thing I might want to do is to visualise the data. So I could look at how the relationship between the number of bikes rented and the temperature. So both of these are numeric variables. I want to see every day separately. So I want to be able to see uh, individual observations. So I'm going to produce a scatter plot. I'm going to use the ggplot function because I find it easier to customize and to add layers to our plots than the base R version of plot. I'm going to first of all specify the data set I'm plotting, which is bike underscore daily. I'm going to specify the information from this data set that I want to show in my plot. So my x axis is going to be temperature underscore C and the y-axis will be determined by the total number of bikes that were rented daily. I'm then going to use a plus symbol to add an extra layer to my ggplot, and I'm going to specify the visual markings of my data using points, so creating a scatter plot. On top of this, uh, I want to make my um, my plot looks uh, look as nice as possible. I want to make sure that the text is large enough to be seen. So I'm also going to change the theme, and I'm just going to use the classic theme, which is pre-built into R. And I'm going to set the base size to so the smallest text size to be 12, so we can make sure it's accessible. So here is the scatter plot looking at the relationship between temperature and number of bikes rented and we can see quite clearly that there appears to be some kind of strong relationship between temperature. It seems as though very few bikes were rented when it was very cold. Uh, so it's a steady increase up to around maybe five, cent five degrees. And then between five and around 23, 25 degrees, there's a much steeper increase in the number of bikes rented and that seems to tail off and reduce between 25 and 30 centimeters, 30 degrees, which makes sense because above 25 degrees, maybe it's not particularly pleasant to ride bikes. Um, so we can see there is a very strong relationship here between bike rental and temperature, but we can also see that appears to be non-linear. This is the perfect situation where we might want to use our generalized additive model. So to fit a generalized additive model in R within the MGCV package, the first thing I'm going to do is to give this model a name. 
So I'm just going to call it gam underscore bike underscore temp so I know what it's containing. And I'm using this arrow symbol to save it as an object to call upon later on in my analysis. The function we use to fit a gam is simply gam. And the first thing we need to specify is the model formula. And this looks very similar to the GLM function or the LM function, if you're familiar with that. I first of all have to tell it what my outcome is from my data set. And that was the rented underscore bike underscore daily variable. And then follow this with a tilde symbol. That's saying is dependent on, or that's afterwards is going to be my covariates. And then I enter the covariates in. So if I have any linear relationships I'm including in here, I just simply enter them in separated by a plus in exactly the same way we would do with a GLM or LM function. If I want to add a smooth function, a nonlinear relationship, however, I'm going to surround that covariate with an S. So S for smooth. And I'm going to enter in temperature as I can see that there's this nonlinear relationship here. When I've specified my model formula, the next thing I'm going to tell it is the data set I'm using. So it's this bike underscore daily. And the final thing I want to change from the default setting is the method that the GAM function is going to use to fit this model. By default, it uses an approach called GCV, which is generally thought of as less stable than the penalized approach that we saw in video one. So I'm going to tell it to use that approach, which in the GAM function is represented by the REML method. So this is restricted maximum likelihood. When I'm happy with this formula, the data, the method, I'm going to run this piece of code and I will get the object, the GAM object up here in my environment, which usually if I fit a model, I could use the summary function to extract some information about the model results. Now in GLMs or LMs, what we get is parametric coefficients of the coefficients of our model. So we here we have the intercept, we get an estimate for that. We also get a standard error and a p-value associated with it. But notice that temperature isn't up here. And that's because this is further down. So this is the smooth term. This is not telling us information about the coefficients because remember, we get many coefficients for a single smooth function. The number of coefficients is going to be determined by the number of knots or turning points that are as determined this smooth function required. So I could actually extract those coefficients if I wanted to using the coef function. So I simply put in my gam object in there and I can get information about those nine coefficients, which means I had nine basis functions extracted from the model fit. Now, unlike linear coefficients, these don't actually have a meaningful interpretation because remember, they are essentially acting as weights for this smooth function. So it's determining the nature of this relationship. So instead of simply looking at the p-value associated with the coefficients and the coefficient estimates, as many of you would do for a linear model, what we're going to do instead is to extract this linear relationship and we're going to plot the prediction of that on a, on a, on a plot over here and then we're going to interpret that rather than the coefficient themselves. Now I could do this using the base R function plot, which if I enter in a gam object, I'm going to set the argument shade to be true, simply because it's gonna show me the confidence interval of this line, um, just in a nicer way to look at. And that's gonna show me the estimated nonlinear smooth function between temperature 
and the smooth function itself. So notice that this isn't actually an estimate on the outcome scale. But what it's doing instead is that when these models are fitted by default, R is going to center them around zero in an effort to make them easier to interpret. So zero could kind of be thought of as the average effect. So this is kind of where the average number of bikes occurred. Below that is a reduction from that average and above that is an increase. So I can make that reference a bit easier to see by adding a line, of, a reference line, a b line, horizontal, so h is equal to zero. And I'm just going to change this to a dashed line to make it easier to see. So I can see, as expected from the plot that we had earlier, between min below minus 10 up to maybe about two degrees, we have this really steady increase, which picks up speed between about two or three up to maybe 25. And then this reduces between there. So we can clearly see this estimated function of that relationship. We can see a confidence interval around that line. But as we are comparing it to this kind of standardized function, we might prefer to see it on the actual outcome scale, making it, putting it into the context of the problem that we're dealing with. So that's where the marginal effects package comes in, as that includes the function plot underscore predictions, which takes the model that we fit, so gam bike temp, takes the covariate that I've entered as a smooth function, which was temperature underscore C. I can also show the observed points on this plot. So basically overlapping it with the original um, data, the original scatter plot. And I can add that using the points argument, which takes a value between zero, where the points are completely transparent, in other words, we can't see them, to one where they're completely solid. So if I put 0.5, that's going to be a little bit see-through, but still visible. Another benefit of using this plot predictions is it's actually plotted uh, within the ggplot framework. So I could add on extra layers here and I could you know, change the theme to make it consistent with my previous plot earlier. So this here shows that relationship. It shows the trend that's been estimated based on that GAM. And it's allowing us to look at that relationship without assuming that it is constant, it's linear. However, there are a few points down here that you know this is not particularly good at capturing. There appears as though, despite the general trend increasing as temperature increases, they have kind of the optimal temperature sort of within this model, but there's very few bikes rented. So we might want to extend this model to improve it and take account of other variables within our data set, try and capture exactly what's going on with the data. Now, if we look back at this data set and think about which of the variables may actually be having quite a strong impact on this, something like rainfall could be quite, playing quite a significant role because we can see here that perhaps these are days where it's warm, but it's raining, so it's still not going to be very pleasant to ride your bike. So let's investigate that. We're going to plot this scatter plot we had earlier. I'm going to copy that and paste it down here, but I'm going to add on the rain variable and I'm going to change the color of these points so that it takes the value of whatever rain, whether it rained or not on that day. And just to make it easier to see, I'm going to change the color theme, the color palette, and I'm going to manually set this color palette. So the values, and I want yes to be blue, so it's blue when it's rained, and no to be maybe brown because it's dry. So I'm going to have blue, 
And then I'm going to use a nice chocolate faux colour to show the no. So when I plot this, I can see quite clearly that that does appear to be the case. Where there is a lower than average number of bikes rented, despite the temperature being optimal, these are days where it rained. So it's not explaining everything because there are still higher values where it did rain, but it definitely seems to explain a lot of what's going on at this bottom end. So what I might want to do is to add rain in here, either as a covariate itself, so if I'm expecting, you know, the um, the trend between temperature and number of bikes to be equal, whether it rained or not, I could include that separately as a linear predictor. Or if I expect that this relationship between temperature and number of bikes rented may actually differ between days where it rained and where it didn't, I may want to include it as an interaction term. And because I'm only looking at one continuous covariate and a categorical, I could actually try and plot this using the Geon Smooth layer in my ggplot because the method GAM actually exists within this Geom Smooth framework. So this is going to fit because I've got this categorical variable set for color, I'm going to produce two smooth estimates of the relationship between temperature and rent, uh, bikes rented, one for when it did rain and one for di when it didn't. And if these look si sp like significantly different, then potentially I want to include it as an interaction. And I can see here it looks very different. Okay, the nature of this relationship changes quite a lot. So I'm going to take my GAM from earlier I'm going to change the name of it. I'll call it uh, Bike Rain, so I don't overwrite the original. And if I want to include an interaction term where there is a smooth function created separately for each of the temperatures, for each of the days when it rained and when it didn't, I can add an extra term inside this smooth function, which is by equal and then the name of that factor or the interaction term, Rain. And that is now when I look at the summary for this. I can see there's actually two smooth functions fitted here. One for where it rained, one for where it didn't. Still looking at the relationship between temperature and number of bikes rented. And then if I take my plot predictions from earlier, I change the model to the updated model with rain included in there and I put two conditions including rain as well. That's going to fit two separate lines but I can see something strange is going on in this model which is suggesting to me that something about it is not quite right. So besides fitting our model it's very important to check that the model's actually valid and it's actually doing the job that we want it to. So the next video is going to go through some model diagnostics to ensure that the model that we fit is valid, which here it doesn't appear as though it is, and some um, kind of approaches that we can use to improve our model and to rectify any of these issues that arise uh, to ensure that our model is valid when we're interpreting it and that it is robust uh, to these assumptions that we're making about the data.